Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans. What's going on? It's Trip Young. We are back with another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans Real. What's going on? It's Trip Young. We are back with another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, we're getting back into the mental health discussion today with a good friend of the show, Coach D. Um, she's been on the show with us several times. She's our mental health uh, expert on the show. So, you know, every, every so often we got to check in with her. And, uh, you know, just just make sure everything is is good, man. Make sure we, we are good. Our spirits are up. Um, you know, sometimes you got to check in with your friends. Sometimes you got to check in with your family just to, uh, you know, make sure they're good because you never know what a person is going through. So with that being said, we call on Coach D to come in, you know, every every couple of months and just do a do a quick mental health check in with us. Talk a little bit of sports as well, because she's also a, uh, a basketball coach. So we always love having uh, Coach D on the program with us. Um, before we get into uh, our segment with Coach D, though, I want to take a minute to dedicate this episode of Real Fans Real Talk to the late, great Joe Hunt, a uh, good friend of, of myself, good friend of Eric's, good friend of Sean Fontaine, you know, for all the shooting the shit fans. Uh, he passed away this week. Um, he will be missed, but he will not be forgotten. So I'm just going to take a quick moment of silence for Joe Hunt. And with that being said, we're going to jump right into today's programming. All right, guys, I don't I don't already gave the intro, even though this this woman needs no introduction, because once again, we have to call Coach G on the show every couple of months just for our mental health check in and just to see what she's got going on. Uh, the, the mental health discussion is one that we're going to continue uh, to have on Real Fans Real Talk, but but even more so than that in our regular everyday lives. Um, you know, a big part of that is Coach D and just the conversations that we've been having throughout the course of the past, I think going on two years maybe now, um, you know, with her. So she's actually been the reason, especially for me personally, you know, that I've been getting more into the mental health discussion. Um, but, you know, this is Real Fans Real Talk and, you know, mental health in sports is a huge thing that I don't think gets a lot of coverage, which is the other reason why we, we bring in Coach D, um, who is also a, a basketball coach as well. So she's definitely well versed in the sports world. But uh, let me welcome back uh, family. That's right, family. Coach D, welcome back to Real Fans Real Talk. Many blessings, many blessings. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I think you're absolutely right. Sports and mental wealth is synonymous, right? When you ask most people why they play sports, <laughs> you know, uh, it just, you know, it's such a great stress reliever. It frees my mind. I feel fully expressed in my purpose. And all of these things are mental wellness. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so really understanding that I think more and more people are understanding it by force, if that makes sense, because, right, the athlete, the champion, the titan, if you will, is the person the regular ordinary Joe looks up to. Yeah. And so, you know, that whole I just want to be like Mike, that was real because it was people who wanted to be like Cassius Clay and Muhammad and, you know, all these other great um, athletes that were able to impact the world. Mm -hmm. Right. When you talk about the famous soccer player, I always forget his name is because I can never pronounce it right. But the, the Brazilian man, the dark skin man. Wait, um, Fede? Oh, who? Fele, I believe his name is. Fele? I don't know. Fele. I know Pele. I don't know about Fele. Pele. Here we go. Pele. <laughs> again. But yes, him. So, you know, you have him, you have Serena, you have Cassius, you know, you have guys like Michael and LeBron and Magic um, in every sport, Arthur Ashe, in every sector of sport you know, Hussein Bolt, like you have these, these athletes who are like larger than life. And so when you get these type of people, you know, the people that the rest of the people look up to saying, Hey, there's a problem here, or there's a, a, a reapproach that's necessary. Now people are like, yeah, you know, mental health is, you know, I, I self care every day, <laughs> but you know, it's like a lot of people are now like in this space where they're like, you know, they're talking a good one. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as, as, 
as it goes with our country, when things get popular, people talk about it and talk about it and talk about it while it's hot news. And you got the, the wonder coaches out there who sell you the blue pill and, you know, and then it's, <laughs> and then, you know, here, try my course and you'll make a lot of money and your problems will be gone. Um, you know, and so, yeah, it's this like, it's this thing that I, I believe is still like evolving in its own entity. You know, mental health is in so many other spaces right now. Yeah. Um, and I think athletes, as I've said this to you before, athletes are the way, like they are, um, I believe the biggest working form of representation that we have in our social um, atmosphere and and the more that they continue to champion you know mental hygiene uh, I think the, the better you know we all as a society uh, can be and now you you brought up something that I don't think we've actually gotten into on the show just now um, do you find that there are more people trying to take advantage and exploit mental health and <laughs> That goes without saying, right? We live in a capitalistic society. Um, and so how do we capitalize? How do we monetize? That's why I said wonder coaches. Yeah. In basketball, I call them popcorn coaches. And in, in basketball and football, you know about the popcorn coach oh, that ain't cool. made a day in his life, mm-hmm. but he on the court screaming and yelling and hand on the hip. He know what he did. He don't know a damn thing. Yeah. Popcorn coaching. I so with, like Pee-wee football. Same thing. Same thing. And so with, uh, with mental health, I call them wonder coaches because they're selling you wonder. Yes. And, you know, I've even met like people who they themselves as coaches were like, yeah, you know, I tell my clients this and I tell my clients that. But then when I look at them, their bodies are breaking down. They are dis-ease or, or ridden with illness or who in the hell are you teaching? Yeah. You know, um, one thing about human nature is there is a great desire for control. And so you have a lot of coaches and I'm not knocking anybody. Look, they like it. I love it. God bless. But like, it hurts the industry when you have a lot of coaches who are just looking to get rich Mm. and looking to get paid. You know, I went to a, a, a small business expo. I don't know if you've heard of that. And I went to a conference there and, you know, the big marketing thing was feelings. What do people feel and how can you, um, you know, really get whatever it is that you do in, in, in sight of their feelings and emotions. And it's just like, yeah, this is the world that we live in where unfortunately, you know, the way that people get through um, and get on, you know, as we say is by, you know, tackling and, and, and really, um, just going after people's emotions, people's fears, people's vulnerabilities. And it's the same thing with mental health. I mean, when I look at sports, I go to all these mental health conferences all the time. And all they do is, you know, regurgitate the problem, talk about how black kids have it worse and how black men um, need more love. And and, yeah, thanks. We know that. (laughs) That's the end of it. Um, But you get a big name and you get a big face. Now you're selling $50 tickets. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm waiting for God. I'm waiting for my turn because, you know, five, three, three breath meditation, you don't need me to do it. You know, what I'm selling is an opportunity for people to do the work themselves and in a very simple and fun way. Like it's, I'm not saying go to your room. (laughs) What I'm saying is, is do you brush your teeth? And if you say yes, I'm asking you to do that for your mind. And I have a tool for you to do that. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think the exploitation of mental health and mental wellness right now is at an all time high. And it's because we live in a very uh, exploitative society, period. Yeah, every, people get everybody, everybody's getting exploited, everything, every like, if there's right. a way to exploit something for a check, somebody's gonna find a way to do it. You know what I'm saying? And the big thing in marketing is e- e- emotions, right? Emotions, energies, and engagement. How can you identify emotions? So that way you can then from there create this ecosystem of what is needed and then moving forward. Now you have an economy built and a market base off of the research you did to engage with these people's emotions. Yeah. You know, um, it is what it is. (laughs) Tell me, can you just tell me something, um, you know, that we can do as individuals, let's say first thing in the morning, you get up, brush your teeth, wash your face, get dressed, make a little bit of breakfast. 
if we want to do a mental uh, health check-in within ourselves, something that we can do first thing in the morning? I think that's a great question. I would say before you actually do any of that, breathe. Mm. Like, I think that's the issue. You know, people lay down uh, with things on their mind, with tomorrow on their mind, <clears throat> and they wake up already in the day. Okay, okay. Go, I want you going on that. Go, go a little bit. Go. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, for example, I got um, I got a game tomorrow. And so tonight I'm going to sleep with tomorrow on my brain. And then I wake up, I got to get ready for the game. I got to be there for the game. You already fucked up. Excuse my language. Mm. Right? Um, and so Wait. my advice is when you wake up, rise. Do not get up. There's a difference. Mm. Literally taking two to three minutes to get out of bed as opposed to popping out of bed. And just running and get your day started. Running to get your day started. Which is something Trust. we all do. Well, not me, not me, not me. Because as you know, yeah, yeah, well, yes, yes. Don't don't, re- don't come back, Coach D, before ten o'clock. I mean, I'm <laughs> up, but I'm not here for you, um, girl. No, ma'am. Um, hair flip, but yeah, I, I I often say, you know, I meet myself before I meet the world. Yes, and I mean that with every fiber in my body. I hi hi eyelids. How you doing? Hi breath. What you taste like this morning? Like. The, the, the very first thing that I would suggest to people is to rise out of bed and not wake up. Mm. That's the first thing. Okay. Take Even if it's only 30 seconds. <laughs> but, no. um, I would also say after you brush your teeth, right? Number one, make your bed. Rise, make your bed, and then go brush your teeth. Um, I'm a big advocate of making your bed. And um, no, I'm not a fan of people who sleep on sheets and blankets and then have like a cover sheet and then all they do in the morning is remove the cover sheet. I'm not a fan of those people because those people are cheaters. <laughs> those people are cheaters and they, they are cheating the, mm-hmm. the philosophical practice. Seriously. Seriously. It's like people who do email marketing but don't really engage their audience. It's like you're cheating. You're only doing this to check the box. And that is cheating so no we're, you're not included if you are that person you're laughing really hard because i feel like you're that person so you're not about <laughs> your life right now i mean actually, cheating. <laughs> make your like actually get under your bed get in it get messy and the reason i say that is because again we're so focused on tomorrow so most people do that to kind of ski some time off i have to having to make their bed it's like Bro, you like, you do, you're not doing the practice to do the practice, the practice of stopping, doing something for yourself wholly and completely before you go meet the world. It's real. But even in the way that you do that, it's for the world. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to conveniently have my bed already pre made when I get out of it so I can hurry up and join the world and get in it. It's like, what? I do. I'm, like, oh, my God. I do. Yeah. I got two blankets on my bed right now. I sleep on top of the one blanket with the sheets underneath that and the pillows. So in the morning, all I got to do is just fix the pillows back up and I'm good. You cheating at life. That's all I'm saying. All right, I'm going I'm I'm to I'm check myself. I'm checking myself on that. By the next time you come down, I promise you, I'm not. I'm going to get under all the covers. <laughs> yes, enjoy it. Because you know what's interesting too? Very quickly, it's like, and then I'll, I'll have my, my third tip, but People, some people buy illustrious beds. And I want to be one of those people one day. I'm not today. I'm about to get new. I got my eyes on one right now, actually. <laughs> see, see, I mean, these illustrious purple mattresses with NASA tech and, you know, like eight pillows and view. I mean, beautiful. What do you call it? Uh, was it not tapestry? What's the, whatever, whatever that is. Yeah, whatever that is that's on the bed and it's nice. And it's like a few of them. Like you got, you got the sheet, the, the, the yeah. blanket. The, quilts and those type you know what type of beds I'm talking about hotel beds and you don't enjoy it Mm. you're not enjoying it yeah because there's so much you didn't put into the to the look that you wanted to look so perfectly you can't even really enjoy the damn bed right and that's ego right and so how do we and I'm learning that for myself as well it's like yeah we get to enjoy the things that we enjoy without ego which means it ain't for nobody else yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so if, if, you know, you are present 
with what it is that you have and what you've been able to do. You're also able to be grateful and, gra- and, and be and present in your gratitude. You're able to ground. You're able to take a moment and really look at the fruits of your labor and appreciate them. Yes. Right. Take time to appreciate the small things in your life. Like people say, yeah, we got to practice gratitude, but saying thankful, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for life and my kids. Okay. Like, duh. Like if you died, you, you probably, well, we don't know. You don't know, but if kids died, I'm sure you'd be mad. But what else are you really grateful for? The little things. Yeah. I'm grateful. I have a bed like that. I, for years, people don't notice about me for years. I didn't have a bed. I slept on the floor. I slept on other people's floor. I slept in the kitchen and I slept on little small love seat and other couches. The worst. Okay. <laughs> the absolute worst. Okay. So when I decided, when I finally got a bed, I was like, I'm making this shit every day. Like just to sh- show up for myself and be great and show my gratitude, express my gratitude. It's like the people who say, oh, yo, I'm always, I'm mad grateful, but they never say thank you. Like in the moment. Yeah. It's, it's when do you tell yourself thank you yeah. and how do you show that to yourself right yeah. um and so the third tip is five three three get your breathing on um four minute meditation it most people take six minutes to brush their teeth <clears throat> right yeah. between brushing gargling if they scrape their tongue if they floss most people take about anywhere four to, to eight minutes to brush their teeth so that time in the mirror as per your question after you brush your teeth Breathe, take a moment to look in the mirror, look yourself in the eye, say something nice to yourself. Me, I like to affirm what I am blessed, I am grateful, I am loved. Today is going to be a good day. Ooh, well, <laughs> like God is my, <laughs> I, I need to say that to myself. Uh, okay. Literally got on the phone, I took a breath and said, today is going to be a good day. God, you are my instant supply. I am grateful and I am blessed. And that, and that, you know, that I'm praying in that, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm affirming that. And I'm also, I'm commanding that for myself, right? I am choosing, this is what my day is going to be today without checking in with what I think today already is, with what my agenda is, with what's on my to do. That don't have nothing to do with my spirit. Yeah. That's external. And I think that's also an issue for people. It's hard for them to separate the external from the internal. Oh, yep. Right. Um, and so it's like, yeah, number one, get up, rise. Rise. Do not wake. Secondly, make your bed. Like actually make it up. Like it needs to come from being messy. I'm going to do it, okay? I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I, I promise you, I wonder if you'll have a better sleep. If you're just in your bed without a care, without a care, how it looks, how you look how it'll look when you get up, if you're going to have enough time to make it up. Yes, you will. You will. Mm. You will. So yes, make your bed. And then last but not least, breathe. Take a moment to 533. Um, if 533 ain't your jam, then you got box breathing. Uh, if you, you know, say, look, I only got 30 seconds, well then take three deep breaths. Mm. But that moment to just breathe, just breathe. Look at yourself in the face, in the mirror, in the eye, and make a choice about what your day is going to be. And I think those three things will change anyone's life, regardless of how you know much yoga and meditation and you know, because you got a lot of you got a lot of people that do that shit for the for the clout too. Yeah. It's, it's not for you know, it's for everyone else. It's not really for them, so they don't really you know they don't understand what they're really doing or what they're not doing. Not everyone else anyway. And I right. themselves at the same time when you're supposed to be focused on yourself and then, you know, you can help others. But if you don't help yourself first, you know, what's the point? Right. And I mean, that, that but that's the, the world that we live in. Right. Like going back to what you said in terms of the the, the profitization and, and, and the, the purporting of this mental health. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, look at TikTok. I can I can get monetization by being a spiritual healer, whether I'm really a spiritual healer or not. Yep. And like I pray for those people because the ancestors are coming for them. But you know, at the same time, it's like this is the world we live in, right? We live in a world where we're taught to do things for social acceptance, adaptation, and and approval. Mm. Like everything that we're taught to do, go to school, behave, hold your hands dress like a girl, not like a guy, but just like a man and not like a boy. Like everything that we, we're, we're taught to do is based on someone else's need or view 
of, of what we need or what they need so they can monetize off of who we be. <laughs> like, yeah. right? It's like, I need you to be a man and wear clothes. And not because I care about your masculinity or your spirit. It's because actually I need you to buy these clothes to make me rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Everybody got <laughs> an agenda. You know, people, people assume that they have way more control than they do. People assume that they know themselves way more than they actually do. Um, and, you know, being able to fight the world, you know, Nipsey said it best. You know, he said, I read somewhere either you're going to be at peace with the world and at war with yourself, or you're going to be at war with the world and at peace with yourself. And, you know, for a lot of people, there's comfort in being at peace with the world. Mm -hmm. There's comfort in that. And a lot of people aren't ready to admit that, that they prefer that comfort. I ain't trying to go to war with the world. Yeah. Okay. You know, and that's acceptable too. An internal fight um, can be some some different though, man. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. That's that's tough. That's you no, know, and I and I think, you know, we see a you know just a lot of you know just the, the suicide rates and, and self harm and stuff like that because a lot of people just aren't right with themselves, and you know, and it's, I think it's just easier for us to succumb to something like that if we have those internal conflicts and we don't deal with them, we don't address them in any way, shape, or form. You know, it, it's going to be really tough for you at times, and yeah, depending on how much of a fighter you are. That could just make the difference in whether or not you know you you say I'm gonna I'm gonna end it today. I don't want to be here anymore, or no, I'm gonna push through and 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 fight. Well, I mean, yeah, I think that's also like the common misconception that people who, um, and it's not even a succumb, right? I think it's people who choose suicide, mm -hmm. right? Because when we look at succumb, that word presents a uh, defeat. Yes, it's some they fell or surrendered to. But who are we to say that about their lie, right? When yeah. you have this people who protest about, you know, women should be able to marry, right? Um, men should be able to say that their name is from Joe to Jane, right? Like if we're able to fight for our autonomy in life, then we should also, um, we also have the, the opportunity to fight for autonomy in death. And I think, you know, it's one of those things when we learn more and more about mental health, it's not a one size fit all. Um, someone who chooses suicidality is also a fighter because they might have chosen peace within themselves and to stop fighting the world. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Glory. Yeah, the glory in death is rebirth, right? And so none of us knows what happens when we die. Um, Nipsey uh, hustles his stepson, Lauren London, and Little Wayne's son when he was at the funeral. I remember, I, and I, I, I cried during this moment. The, the little boy, I think he was like 12, and this is Wayne's kid, but Nipsey basically kind of raised him. Yeah. And so, yeah. I won't say raised him, but, you know, was in, in, him, no. doing his life, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, the kid was like, yeah, you know, I had a dream. And Nip came to me in my dream, and I asked him where he was, and he said, I'm at Paradise Killer. And he was like, he used to always call me killer. And he was like, this is how I knew it was Nipsey. And he was like, I'm in paradise. And so none of us here on earth knows what death is. Yeah. You know, you have people that have said, oh, I've died and I've come back. And, you know, but what, what did you, what did you experience while you were there? Blackness, nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you may feel the effects of that when you get back here based on being here, but to understand death, one half would have to be dead. And how, so, yeah, how long? Because you can't say you was out for 30 seconds and they brought you back. That's not the same thing. But that, but that's, yeah. No, there are people that say that. They'll be <laughs> like, yo, I, I was dead for two minutes. And I'm like, okay. Like, I did it all. But well, what did you experience while you were there? Because to be honest with you, I've been knocked out before. Mm. I've been put in the chokehold and put to sleep. If you like, I've been, like, I've, I played fighting with boys and it was like, ah, bitch. And I'm like, <laughs> What, what happened? What happened? Like, <laughs> you know how that goes. Stop playing. <laughs> like, so, yeah, was I dead for the, for the next 10 seconds? Who knows? But my thing is that we don't get the way that we're laughing about it now with such a lightness and understanding. I think is the same way that we get to treat suicidality in an understanding. No, I'm not suggesting that we laugh at people who are experiencing extreme or severe suffering no what i'm saying and suggesting is is that those people would be able to come forward 
and get the support that they need if suicidality wasn't seen as such a detriment, such a, such a, 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 a vicious and, and villainous thing for someone to do for themselves, right? Suicidality is about the relief and the release of pain. And the reason many feel against it is because they, are, they believe that life should be worth living, but they're talking about their own life. Yeah. They're not living the life of the person who feels that way. Cause I mean, like, cause I mean, I guess if you think about it, right? Like, if if you're, let's just say, it's slavery, right? If a slave, if a slave decided to take his life because they just couldn't deal with what was going on in the world around them, would we be mad at them for that, or would we be kind of understanding and and say, well, you know, slaves have been beaten, raped, murdered, and they didn't want to deal with that anymore, so you know, they took their their life. Well, I mean, it's interesting that you say that because there is a story like that, and we actually honor um, the the. Oh man, I I'm not good with details as, as much as I like details. I'm not good with them. Um, but there is a story of an African tribe who um, I forgot where they come from. I really I really believe it's the the Ivory Coast. I'm not sure. Um, however, there is a monument dedicated to them because they believe that uh life was to be lived and to be a slave was to not live life and so death was their only option because in order to live one must have an honor an honor about themselves and the life that they're living mm -hmm. and so the entire boat chose to um participate in a collective um offering and that's how i look at it suicide when you look at that word it's very english and, and very violent um but an offering of death because they understood that slavery was not living, that it was not a way of life. Um, we honor them. I, I'm gonna get, I'm actually gonna send it to you. I'm gonna research it. But there's um, statues in the water of these people um, because they chose death over um, suffering um, and, and over a life that wasn't lived. I would also say that um, we get to honor and, and um, appreciate that the person who's privileged and um, doesn't have the tragic story. I think it's, again, you know, back to the ego and emotions and energy. It's, it's easier, right? We're conditioned to believe that it's easier to accept someone wanting to take their own life if they've been through such an egregious life. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And it's like, huh? But then there's less respect for the person who we deem haven't not gone through that. Yeah. And so it's still a stigma, yeah. right? And so stigma is about being able to, to wipe, the, wipe the cards off the table and really see the table in the game for what it is. The suicide is, the, the word itself is a trigger word. Yeah, yeah, because it's violent. It's violent. Yeah. Um, when you look at the meaning of the word, there are a lot of English words that are violent as fuck, like violent. Like yeah. even the way, even wake, to wake is violent. Yeah. It's, it, um, it's so asinine. It's like the wake is behind you. Yeah. But so. to wake up is like to be behind and get what? What are we talking about here? Yeah. Um, you know, and so even the whole morning debate, like people, <laughs> you know, the whole tips, it's like, nah, sister, we don't say good morning because it means death. <laughs> and I get it. And I and I'm actually not a fan of saying good morning. But if someone says good morning to me, I'm not about to shoot them down. Like I know they're not wishing death on me. Yeah. Um, However, the language that we speak, yeah, it's very violent. It's very violent AF. <laughs> no, that's, very a, violent. that's a fact. Now, I want to jump into, you know, because I, I actually did come on today because I wanted to talk, you know, we, we saw, um, you know, over the summer, Naomi Osaka uh, was dealing with, with some, some, some mental health issues. And then more recently, you know, this past week, uh, Ben Simmons uh, from the 76 as he came out and said he was dealing with uh, some mental health issues and he wasn't actually ready to, to, to play. Um, I what I want to talk to you about is the reception that women athletes get when they speak uh, about mental health and male athletes. Um, because one of the things that I noticed you know, a lot, and this is, you know, going back decades, especially, you know, in, in basketball and football that is spoken about a lot in, in regards to individual athletes is the quote unquote mental toughness of an athlete 
who has it, who doesn't. And a lot of times people try to say, you know, if a person has not risen to a champion status or, or that height, they don't have a certain level of mental toughness or they just don't have mental toughness at all. Uh, I, yeah, it's interesting. You said I have two, two, two quick points. So the first one, hold on, let me go get my other hat. <clears throat> and so, as you know, we got, we got the hats out. Um, they're not officially out yet. They will be very soon. So we have the Just Breathe fitted uh, and then the 533 fitted, which is, um, you know, the, the breath meditation and my slogan. So on each hat, um, I also often say, mental toughness is not mental health. So I wear that pin often. Mental toughness is not mental health. Um, I worked with boys for over 15 years and <clears throat> I'm gay, right? So that I'm masculine presenting. So I can hang out with the dudes. I'm like, hey girl, I, you know, I can kind of float between the two. And so uh, I date women, right? So there's an understanding. I am not a man. However, socially, there are things that I do understand things that I actually experienced being masculine presented. Um, and so with that being said, uh, the entire uh, foundation of the athlete project of Get Fit Fly Right of my own personal campaign is that regardless of how mentally tough anyone is that has no bearing on their emotions. Mm -hmm. I'm a black woman from the projects whose parents aren't here. I'm gay, I'm alive and I'm still cute. I don't think anyone else has it tougher other than whoever has my story and it has a child. <laughs> because once and they got to be a single parent. Okay. Once you <laughs> took, I'm like, ah, oh, you got it. Okay. <laughs> like, but in all seriousness, um, mental toughness is not mental health. And uh, for years, right. Um, mental toughness is, I'm just going to say it. It's a part of the pseudo uh, predominantly white, um, just affect of we're the best and, you know, we're, we're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna persevere and, you know, it's, it's this old American ideology and American lore around being the toughest and, and being, uh, the, the most ruthless and being cutthroat. Um, and, you know, I think that has affected black people in a way more severe way than it can have ever affect white people. Um, and the reason is, is because white people are allowed to be mediocre and still have a good life. Yes. Black people, if you're mediocre, you're broke, you know, no one knows your name and no one cares. Mm -hmm. But on the opposite end of that spectrum is everyone now cares about not you, but what you do. And so now black people <clears throat> in a large scale, excuse me, artists like yourself have been able to take that power back. But for those that are on the main stage, like Ben Simmons, like Simone Biles, like a Jalen Brown, like a Kevin Love, like a Delonte West, there is a whole slew of people. We can go from gender, we can even go from race. The way that Kevin Love was treated versus the way Delonte West was treated. Mm -hmm. You understand know, the way that Jalen Brown um, kind of like slipped in and slipped out, you know, uh, literally talking about the same things that Kyrie Irving is talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it really depends on, I don't think it's race or gender. This is just my opinion. I think it's about the status quo. Who's more marketable? Who makes us look good going back to the professionalization of mental health? Who looks more good for us to stand next to with their mental health? Simone Biles is a champion athlete who pulled herself up from her bootstraps because she was a black girl and she had a crackhead mama and she got adopted by some really nice people and now she's amazing she's allowed to have a mental health issue mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving isn't because he's like fuck the system right like so if if you know we we have to you know we really have to get into the narrative of media yeah right because th that plays a major role in how we hear and understand these these intricate situations and enough to compare them to each other and so I think we have to put everything on the table in that space you know Simone Biles aside from her gender yeah she's allowed to have trouble because she's never been in trouble yeah she's allowed to um <clears throat> have the safe space because she's seen as such a darling yeah. she's seen you know someone who is one of the good black folk which is a thing yeah 
she's she's not the black folk that's stirring up trouble mm -hmm. whether people want to believe it or not there's been a, a a disconnect between just the 1960s and being a good nigga yeah i had asked me uh last year or the, maybe the year before last it's like is there a difference between a good black a black person and a bad black person i said yeah tupac <laughs> What did I say? Oh, Tupac and um, Thurgood Marshall. Like it was something like that. It was like the difference between like a rapper and like someone like a black person who chooses to be, you know, uh, a different figure in society, mm -hmm. right? Because that's a good nigga, because he's playing his role. And then you have the loud nigga, the one that always want to stir some shit up. That's how Kyrie has been perceived. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next, someone like Simone Biles who is this darling woman who, you know, had such a uh, enduring life, but her story is so amazing. Kyrie got this similar, a similar, actually, he has the more cookie cutter story than Simone Biles does. Yeah. He grew up with both his parents, right? And his sister, oh. he had a two parent household, wasn't yeah. in the play ball. His father gave up his dream because his mama died of cancer and pushed his son to start him. What? Went to college. He actually a perfect cookie cutter story. Yeah. So but his story is, is marketable because he's a black kid that's yeah. talking about F the system. Like is so I guess before 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 we get out of here then so because all right with Simone with Simone Biles right who I, who I absolutely love and I think the world loves her mm -hmm. you know I, her choosing to put her mental health before the Olympics and 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 the reaction that the that the media puts out versus let's just say if LeBron James was in the NBA Finals and said, "Well, I need to take two games off because mentally I'm not ready." I I just think that there would be a different response from the media for that as opposed, yeah, I, which is and I and I you know the Olympics and the NBA Finals are on the same same level because that's the the apex of you know where you can go in that particular sport. But I just feel like the response is going to be different. No, I agree. I mean, I mean, we could easily say and identify that, yeah, women are um, given the spaces to be emotional in public, like they just are, um, depending on what they're emotional about. Because Simone Biles wasn't given that same space and courtesy when she was talking about that white man that was harassing and sexually abusing the girls. Mm. So again, we, we you know, I, I, I'm going to play devil's advocate because we have to talk about all the things. It's easy to talk about the surface things or the superficial things or the women versus men. That's Venus versus Mars. It's an easy topic. Yeah. But when we get into the intricacies of where the versus is, what's really in that, right? Um, contrast. Uh, when uh, uh, James sort of said, hey, I know I wasn't the best guy for the shot and I believe in not being selfish because for me, I'd rather lose with my team than trying to be the man. He was literally sought out. Oh, you're not mentally tough. You're not like Jordan. You're this and I'm sure, I'm sure that played on his mental health yeah. because, or his mental wellness rather, because at the end of the day, he made a choice and he stuck with it. And I applaud LeBron for that because I think that was the choice that that aided him in being able to thrive in his mental health yeah. because he let go of the the reasoning and the and the necessary um even if only practice in theory to be like lebron or kobe where kobe came out saying i'm gonna be like michael <laughs> like and when they asked lebron does he want to be like kobe he said no i'm lebron james yeah and so that that was more indicative of perfect practice of mental hygiene what lebron did and then endured versus how it was spun off. Because he was spun off to not be mentally tough, to not be clutch. He's not gonna be top five, yada, yada. And he said, okay, cool. And then still went out and got a ring and still went out and did something a rookie has never done. You know what I mean? And so I think when we talk about mental health, we need to understand that that's the state of something. But when we talk about mental hygiene, it's the practice and many do not practice mental hygiene. Bubble baths and decompressing self-care is hygiene, but it's not mental hygiene. It's not emotional hygiene. It's relaxation, call it what it is. Yeah. Meditation is a practice of concentration, not one of clearing your mind so you can feel better, right? 
we have to be honest about the Western context and its condition on our own cognitive behavior. And until we do that, or until people do that, they will constantly be in this wheel of superficial conversation, pointing the pointing fingers and pointing the blame in their own mental well-being, not being what they think it is, but what it's conditioned to be based on what marketers are on your phone. Mm. And that's just the hard truth. You know what I'm saying? Why did I start drinking wine? Because I thought that's what women did after a hard day of work. Great marketing. Yeah. Listen, man, I, I can't tell you how many different alcohols I didn't try because rapper said it was it was the end oh, of alcohol to drink. Oh, yeah, did he? We out here? Yeah. You so. know, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Women and men, women versus men will always get that reception. Um, I think women have a lot more space and room to be emotional and vulnerable in public. However, it's only what's marketable because that respect doesn't go for every kind of woman or all women. It's like the person who gets pushed is the person whose tail coat is long enough for others to hang on. Mm. You know, that is a quote. I'm gonna quote that later. Yes, but <laughs> that is a quote. But yes, you know, um, and so when it comes to mental health though, it's a very, that's a very personal thing. I don't care how popular LeBron James, Simone Biles, any of these people are. If they breath stink, people gonna know. Yeah. That they and so mental health is the same thing. Eventually, it starts to stink. Yeah. So like your mama said, you smell yourself first when anybody do, so go wash your butt. <laughs> <laughs> you can smell like outside, go in there and take a shower. Okay. You know, so, you know, yeah, people get to when they rise in the morning, they get to, you know, get in their thoughts and, and get in themselves, you know, when they make their bed, they have that moment to work for themselves and express gratitude and love for themselves while allowing their minds to just filter naturally. Yeah. Getting their body and mind in sync and ready for the day before they go meet the world. And then lastly, just breathe five deep, three fast, three loud. The deepest for your, your mind, the fastest for your body the loudest to bring them together. You know what I'm saying? And so now before I go out into the world, I'm not, I'm not on no different type of time. I'm able to actually hear people and see people. I'm not thinking about what happened last week. I'm not thinking about how I feel. I'm not thinking about what my man did or what my girl did this morning. And now this person is jumping on my last nerve. Like, no, your energy is bad. Ain't got nothing to do with that. Mm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When people breath stink or they forget to brush their teeth because they rush them out, they don't talk to people. They don't blame other people. They know, oh shit, I didn't brush my teeth. Let me, let me fall back. Yeah. But you know, we get to do that for our brain. We get to do that for our emotions. And so that that's my advice. That that's three simple things that you could do. Um, if you need help, people are also more than welcome to check me out at Get Fit Fly Right. Hit my link tree. You can book a session with me. Uh, it's not free <laughs> um, where, you know, you can come and you can do 533 with me. We can talk out, you know, the hygiene system you've had and maybe work out some kinks. Um, mm -hmm. Because again, you know, hygiene is a system and there's a discipline to it. It's not something you do when things get bad. It's something you do because you just do it. Yeah. And, you know, people need help with that, you know, so I'm here. All right. Well, listen, Coach D. When 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 the five three three hats all ready, you let me know because I got to cop me one uh, off the rip. I got to get one of those. Um, I appreciate you so much for for always taking the time uh, for us to come on the program whenever we ask you. Are so willing to come and uh, and and just speak to the people. So I definitely appreciate you on that. Um, and it ain't gonna listen. We ain't, ain't gonna be too long before we bringing you back again because I'm gonna, I'm gonna need another session. I'm good from the last time. You know when, when the Lakers had took that L. I'm good. My mental is back. I'm in a good space right now. I'm positive. You know it's a whole new season, so I'm doing I'm doing good for myself. Um, but I definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much for pulling up. Always, always. I appreciate you, Rick. All right. Well, listen, guys, with that being said, let me shout out the sponsors real quick. Big shout out to Petro Home Services, Kmart, the Rosado Firm, and of course, uh, Soundview Liquors for keeping the bar stocked. You guys can catch this episode and every episode Thursday night at 8 p.m. on uh, Verizon 43 BPN2 in New York City. But don't worry, if you're not in the New York City area, you can still watch from anywhere in the world. Just go to realfansrealtalk.com. Click that button on the homepage. You get to see me chopping it up with Coach D, man. What's better than that?
Nothing. All right, man. Oh, and, 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 and don't forget, yesterday's price is not today's price. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> well, myself, Trip Young, and of course, Coach D, my favorite. We up out of here. Peace. Motherfucker, this is your African King of Comedy, Michael Blackson. You watching Real Friends, Real Talk. Get real with it, my son. Real talk, we as real as you thought.